Test, 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 test. Today, I wanted to make a quick video about my feminine SE. It's something I've been thinking about a lot recently. I suppose that to someone who might not have Savior SE, it might seem like a more positive trait to have. But at this time, there's just a lot of things that I don't necessarily like about having Savior Feminine SE. So let's get into it. One thing that I don't like about having Feminine SE is that my memory is so slippery. And that's one of those telltale signs that you'll notice in other people. If their memory is crap and they're constantly misquoting the sensory, and that's things like directions, years, names, places, things like that. Most likely they have feminine sensory. And mine is my savior number one. So you would think that because I rely on my savior number one so heavily, that it would be a strength of mine, but that is not the case. My feminine SE is so incredibly slippery and I feel like that is the root of all of my spacey ADD issues. And little known fact about me is that I actually, I, I have a driver's license, but I don't drive. It helps that I don't need to because my husband and I, we live together, we work together. So we just carpool all the time, but it does kind of suck that I don't have a way to get around. And I feel like I'm always burdening people, but it's because of my feminine SE. I drove in high school, in college, whenever I had to get to a location, I would do it, but I have gotten into four or five little fender benders and it's always because I'm so inattentive. I love driving in general. If it's long distances, I love cranking up my music, singing, and just having a great time. But when it's the little tiny inner city dealing with people and left turns and parallel parking and it really gets to me and I don't notice things and then I end up in a stupid fender bender and it's the scariest thing in the world to me because I am demon and I. So my first my first and foremost fear is, oh God, who is going to get out of that car? Who Are they going to chew my head off? And I always feel like I'm going to die. So I really hate driving for that reason. Anyway, and I attribute that to my feminine SE. Another thing, I really hate taking phone calls. Like, please email me, text me. I need it to be written down so that I can reference it later. If someone calls me on the phone and they're asking me about, for example, I handle big events at our brew pub. That's just one of the things that I do. But whenever they call me and they're like, oh, well, what about for this headcount on this date? It's like, first of all, I need to sit at my computer and calculate this all out. But sometimes I also forget what I tell them. And so they'll come back at me later and be like, that's not what you said. And it's like, well, bitch, don't call me then. Like, please just, can we do it in an email exchange so that both parties can reference what was said, and what was not said, and everything is just there. And I think that's just me also being an ST and I need that clarity. I need the thread, the trails. It helps so much. So I hate phone calls, hate phone calls, especially when it's work related. Zoom calls are not as bad because I'm at my computer anyway, so I can be taking notes or typing things and I absolutely have to take notes or I will forget. And then kind of mentioned this already, but I cannot hold in my brain directions, geography. I'm very directionally challenged. And I think that also lends to my hatred or fear of driving. Even in Hawaii, we call things, oh, it's the Makai side or the shit. I need to look it up. Mauka versus Makai. And one of them means the mountains and one of them means the sea. And so you tell people, oh, just park on the Makai side of the parking lot. And I'm always like, what the fuck? Like, how am I supposed to know which side is the, the mountain and the sea? Like, I'm not like projecting it in my brain and able to figure out what the hell you're talking about. But I've always been very geographically challenged and directionally challenged. I feel like someone who has masculine SE or even masculine SI. Masculine S is probably going to grasp and remember streets and turns and locations. Yeah, like my brother, I don't know his exact type, but he is 
an amazing driver because he knows where absolutely everything is. He's even great at being able to explain things to me because he knows I'm directionally challenged. So he explains things in a very picturesque description, which helps me out a lot. I have called him many times in my life crying like, Kyle, I don't know where I am and just sobbing. There was one time where I accidentally got off the uh, monorail in San Francisco and I accidentally got off before the Oakland airport and I ended up at Fruitvale Station. I think there's even a movie called Fruitvale. I don't know what it's about, but I got off and I didn't know where the fuck I was. And then once I left the uh, platform and I went down the steps, I could not get back in. It was locked. So I'm sitting there at this bus stop by myself at like 10 at night and this car kept driving around with a bunch of guys in it and they were like hooting at me and slowing down sticking their heads out the window it was so scary I was just sobbing on the phone with my brother and he somehow figured out my coordinates where I was this was before iPhone so I could not figure out where I was and he somehow figured out exactly where I was and sent a vehicle to come and get me that's how bad I am at directions Another interesting thing about feminine SE, at least in my experience, is that instructions are slippery. I think for me, because I'm an ST and I need that ST clarity, you know how sometimes words have multiple meetings? I don't always know exactly what the person is talking about if they don't clarify. And so I'll assume something and run with it only to realize I was wrong. So one good example is that when I was in the fifth grade, we had to do this huge report on Hawaii, which included like all the islands, the monarchy, the geography, the plants. It, it was very intensive. And one of the topics of that report was the state seal. Okay. I did not know that there was an actual emblem or seal. I just thought, okay, the state seal, because there's a state bird you know? And so I did this whole elaborate report on the monk seal, which is the state seal of Hawaii. And to this day, it baffles me that no other kids misconstrued that or misinterpreted it. I just went all in on the monk seal and whatever. It's not like I was wrong. They should have clarified. And then another memory I have is that when I was in the second grade or something there was a class party that everyone had to bring in something so it was someone maybe brought paper plates someone brought rice it's hawaii so that's normal maybe someone brought salad whatever so my item was ice cream great it's super easy you can just pick it up but the instruction said okay two half gallon and i and i know now that it meant two half gallons of different flavors but instead I interpreted it as two and a half gallons so I ended up bringing two and a half gallons of one flavor of ice cream and it confused the hell out of everybody and there was so much leftover ice cream and it just melted all over the place so that that's the kind of stuff that I struggle with is that if you're not super super clear my brain may not interpret it the way you think that you're saying it that's been a lifelong struggle of mine. I could probably think of a million more examples. Another thing, it's really hard for me to meet people and network. And it's because my memory is slippery. And so it's hard to remember if I've already met them. I joke around and I say that I have facial blindness or prosopagnosia, pros prosopagnosia, something like that. But And I say it in a joking way because I know it's like a real condition and mine is probably not as bad as the real diagnosis. But for me, I just have absolutely no facial recognition and memory of people unless they have some kind of real stark defining feature about them. Like they wear red rimmed glasses or they have a specific fashion sense. They don't have something like that where I can immediately pinpoint. I probably am not going to remember them. So many times in my life, I'll see someone and I'll be like, it's so nice to meet you. And I turns out I have already met them maybe three times. Like, sorry, I don't know. I need assistance with that, like Google Glasses or something, who's just going to ping, bring up their name and say, you met them here and here and here, because I cannot for the life of me do it. It's so hard for me. Even when I intentionally try to make acronyms or images in my head, I'll remember it for like a good hour and then it's just gone. 
So I really hate networking and I really hate meeting people because people will remember me because obviously they're normal, but I don't remember them. Okay. Another thing about being a feminine SE, like my inability to remember faces, I only find things interesting if it's obscure in a SE way. Otherwise, it's bland and boring. The SE needs to be so visually beautiful and breathtaking. Otherwise, it's just like meh to me. And I've known that ever since I was a kid, I've always hated things like sightseeing. I didn't understand why we would like drive up an entire volcanic mountain where the scene is the same the entire drive up and then you finally get to the top and everyone's like oh my gosh and taking pictures and it's like we've been staring at this for like the last 45 minutes I don't understand why it's so exciting and even when I went to like the Grand Canyon I got out and I was like okay cool and I was like so ready to leave because it's just brown and canyons and it looks the same and I don't know. Okay, here's another one. For me, SE can be very overwhelming. SE is the the external reality. And so you would think that people with Savior SE are going to enjoy things like the outdoors and outdoor activities, but not me. I get very overwhelmed. And I feel like it has something to do with the fact that feminine SE is easily moved. If you've seen the differences in feminine SE dancing versus masculine SE dancing, Feminine SE, you can tell because they're almost like moved by the music versus masculine SE, they're almost like creating and punching the music. In that sense, I feel like I am also moved by things like wind and rain and sun. And for me, I I get grouchy when I'm out in the sun, in direct sunlight. I can't handle it. And I live in Hawaii where you're expected to like the beach and hiking and outdoor activities, but I can't do it. I get so grumpy in the sun. I don't like it. I don't enjoy it. And I think everyone in my life knows now not to invite me to things like beach days and picnics. And I don't know, just something about being outdoors is so overwhelming to me. Even traveling, obviously, I never regret traveling. And I like the experience and the memories and the change in scenery and all of that. And also, it could be a demon and I thing where I just don't like planning and booking the hotel and the flight and getting myself to the airport and I've forgotten things like my phone or my ID or my wallet uh, that that's another thing I very much lose a lot of my physical things but anyway back to travel it's really hard for me to get myself ready and pack appropriately for the weather and everything and then when I'm there it's so hard for me to keep up with things like my emails and texts and my obligations while also trying to enjoy the trip. And then once I get back, it's like I have to do all the laundry and put everything away. And then once I'm back in the office, I'm bombarded and overwhelmed with all the emails and stuff that have piled up. So travel is very overwhelming to me. And thankfully, my husband is an I, so he does all the planning, all the coordinating. I don't think I would, I wouldn't initiate travel myself. Okay. Another interesting thing, and I don't know if this is feminine SE or if this is demon consume. I mean, I guess my consume is SEFI, but I'm a very picky eater and I always have been. For me, it was, I didn't like a lot of vegetables growing up. I never ate salads. My first salad was in high school and I like it now, but it was like, I wouldn't try new things and I didn't like, I, I still don't like carrots, tomatoes, cucumbers, beets. Beets taste like what insects smell like to me and cucumbers smell like BO. There's just a lot of things that I'm I'm really picky about regarding food. Once I latch onto something that I like, that's all I want to eat. But obviously, I'm not going to cause strife to other people in my life because I am Savior DE. So I'm not going to inconvenience them and I'll eat whatever they're eating. But deep down inside, there's a lot of likes and dislikes that I have with my food. And I spoke about this in my previous video, but I am hearing impaired. So that's one of my senses that's out. I've put a lot more emphasis on my other senses growing up to kind of make up for that. I am very, very attuned to visual things, very sensitive to smells, and I'm also very, very sensitive to touch. When I was growing up, I know a lot of people would sleep with stuffed animals and yeah, they're cute, but I always slept with a blanket that was so 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 soft and silky I love 
nice blankets for that feeling, that soft feeling. But lately, what I sleep with is I sleep with a Yeti ice pack. And I'll put up a picture. It gives me so much comfort to have a little cold pack that I wrap in a t-shirt and then I just have it on my chest and it feels so nice, cools me down, and it's like a comfort thing. But I can go on and on about why the Yeti one, there's a hole in the middle so you can put your hand through and it cools on your hand. And if you lie on the side, you can put your ear in that hole so that you're not smashing your ear. This is not a sponsored ad. I just love sleeping with my Yeti ice pack. I have two in the freezer. My husband bought me an extra one because he knows how much I love it. So now I rotate it every night. So one's in the freezer and one's sleeping in the bed with me. Okay. Last thing, I'm not prepared with more positive things about SE, but one positive thing that I like is that I am very attuned to aesthetics. I'm great at aesthetics. Um, I've always known this since I was a kid, and I think things like design and branding and packaging always came naturally to me. And I think especially when it's combined with my masculine FI and I like the way it looks, I will go to great lengths to make something look good and appealing to me. But because I am also Savior TE and I like consensus and tribe consensus, I think that also makes me good at things like branding and packaging because I'm always thinking about, okay, do I, if I like it, but also would it TE make sense to everybody else? I think my type is probably good at things like aesthetics. I just don't know evolutionarily why feminine SE would be a good trait to have. It's just, for me, so slippery, so forgetful, so lost, so confused. Does anyone else feel like that? It, like, I don't, I don't, is it even worse if it's in your demon state? Because it's pretty bad for me and it's my savior number one. Okay, that's all I have for today. But thank you for listening and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.